All right, so dealing with the back, we've checked the manual gearbox, the breather, the safety wires on the actual gearbox itself, the fluid, we checked the push-pull tube, the bell crank, tail rotor control, pitch links, tail rotors, jam nuts, stinger, stabilizers, walking back up the tail boom, no rivets are coming out. Here's our exhaust, make sure this doesn't just wobble all around, give it a nice little shake, not too hard. And we're going to check inside this engine compartment, left side. Alright, so looking on the left side of the engine, you can see a little bit more. Here, once again, are the three valve covers going down the side of this 0540. Check, make sure there's no leaks, safety wires are in place of each valve cover. Here's the oil line. The torque stripes are still there. There's a spark plug line, make sure that's all nice in there. Another spark plug, here's the exhaust and intake manifolds. No cracks, follow that around as far as you can. This line that goes from the exhaust right back there, this orange colored line, goes into the through the firewall, that's your heater. Here's the lower frame, make sure there's no cracks in this. Check all your torque stripes, nothing's moved. This little breather line on top, the orange colored one, blows cool air on the oil filter, keeping it nice and cool. I want to check the dipstick there. There should be between there should be between seven and nine quarts of oil. And uh, here's our mag right here. Make sure the torque stripe hasn't moved. Ground wires are in place. That's what those metal straps are. And here is oil pressure uh, for our gauge. Everything looks good. This little line right here coming off of cylinder number five is the manifold pressure line. This goes all the way up and over back down and in to your manifold pressure gauge. The 44 is a lot harder to uh, pre-flight but this uh, push-pull tube that comes to the firewall right there that is your correlator. It goes back here to your carburetor which you cannot see. Make sure it's properly attached, nothing's loose and it correlates as it should. This orange insulated line comes out from the block down to here is the oil line for your oil pressure gauge. So we're pretty much done in, in the left engine compartment. So here's our main fuel tank sump. All you have to do is when you have a little container, push this in, fuel comes out. Once again, don't do this without a container. I'm only doing it to show you how to do it. So left side of the aircraft, make sure all the screws are in place. Check the left skid gear, like just like we did on the, the right. Make sure your fuel cap is on. There's the main fuel cap. So we need to inspect the main rotor hub assembly and rotors. So how do we get up there? Come down here, open these panels up. See this little sign right here? Step here. So you want to step right here, right next to the firewall. Don't climb up on the cabin, but uh, you want to stand from right there and then inspect the main rotor hub. So here we have the three main rotor hub bolts, two for the blades, the top one is for the teeter bearing, the other two are for the blades. Now on this side there are two that have cotter pins, and the other side, the other bolt in that corner is on the other side, the other one, the other side has a cotter pin. There's, check the uh, torque stripe on that middle pal nut, you want to check the inverter grip on the torque stripes, you want to check to make sure this band, this boot right here, Make sure there's no leaks, and make sure there's no crinkles in the boot itself. It's very common to find these and you just don't want to have too big of a crease or it may tear, cause a lot of leaking. Right there are the main rotor pitch links. Make sure that they have the safety wire installed. Check the, the rod ends by twisting them, make sure there's no lateral or vertical movement. Check the pal nuts, come down, check the same thing right here. Make sure the boot around the rotating swash plate is safely secured. Alright, you want to check these guys. The front of the main order mast, it's attached to the stationary swash plate. Check the rod ends, make sure they have free movement but no vertical or lateral movement. Um, check the pal nuts, make sure nothing's moving. 
Once again, you're just going up there making sure nothing nothing has changed. Torque stripes are in place, no leaks, no cracks, and uh, no excessive play. So to check the main rotor blades, walk down the blade and especially check the last two feet of the blade, make sure there's no separation in the bond line. Right there at the end, and there's not, I've checked. So that's it. That's all you have to do to pre-fly an R44. Now I've left some things out just because they're hard to get to. I didn't have a checklist because I was carrying the camera.